this flow is going to focus on uh, hip mobility and glute strength, mainly uh, hip abduction. So you're going to start off by getting into a 90-90 position. We're going to get a nice stretch, our right legs out in front. Both our knees and hips are creating 90 degree angles. I'm pushing my right butt cheek back as far as humanly possible, trying to get it to be as far away from this right kneecap as I can. So right glute is on stretch. We'll be here for two minutes. At the two minute mark, we'll start the uh, ramping of the pails, portion of the pails rails contraction, and that's gonna be me driving down into the floor, progressively building up to a max effort, 100% driving down into the ground. I want you to think about there being a scale underneath this, underneath this right uh, kneecap to ankle, and you're gonna see that scale gradually build up and how much weight that it's showing to the max weight that you can to register on that scale at the 100%. We'll be there for 10 seconds. The rails contraction, is gonna be the antagonist. So instead of pushing down, I want you to think almost about like pulling up. I don't want you to lean your torso back. Try to keep that torso where it is. And if anything, we wanna to try to pull it forward by trying to lift up this entire piece of the lower leg with more of your inner thigh. So that's gonna actively pull your straight spine torso forward into a deeper stretch. So we're, not, we're never going down into this position. Our arms are posted up. Our chest can be forward, but we're not rounding our spine forward. We'll start it up in 20 seconds. Ten seconds, we'll start it up. We'll start at 20%. Five seconds we start. And gently start pushing down into the earth that right outside of the knee, all the way down to the outside of your foot, pushing down. Ramp it up to 40%. 60%. Big breath in, and 100 go. As hard as you can, make that scale underneath the leg as high as possible. Three more seconds. Flex everything in your body. Now freeze where your torso is. Try to lift up. Try to pull your chest forward into a deeper stretch. Three more seconds, everything's tight. And relax into your stretch. So freeze where you are, don't come out of your stretch. We're here for 30 more seconds. Hopefully we're able to get a little bit further forward with our straight spine torso. Great, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna continue to work this right glute. We're gonna to need to flip over into the other 90-90 position. So to make that a little more bang for our buck, we're gonna do a 90-90 transfer. So arms out to the sides or out in front of your body. You're gonna lift your left knee up, nice and slow, get it up as high as you can. Then you'll slowly let your right leg leave the earth, nice and slow. We're switching over, now our left leg, we're still gonna be a 990 sit with our left leg out in front. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift this right knee off of the ground, keeping our right inner foot on the ground. We're gonna do 10 really slow and controlled reps, lifting this right knee as high as we can. You should feel this right in that glute we were just working. So we got 10 lift offs, get a good squeeze at the top, Really control the way up. It's gonna be roughly a two count up, two count down with a good squeeze at the top every rep. Next, we're gonna get into no crazy transfer. We're gonna get into a quadruped position, also known as hands and knees. 
type position. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to stack our hip over our right knee. We're gonna abduct the hip. So we're gonna kick it out to the side as far as we can. My knee and foot is off the ground. I'm then gonna extend my knee out to a straight position, bend my knee back in, and then return. You need to put it down in between every rep you can, but it's full abduct like your dog peeing on a fire hydrant. Kick the knee, straighten the leg, return. We're gonna do 10 of these. Make sure we do maximal abduction every single rep. Don't let your torso rock. Pretend like there's a plate of spaghetti on that lower back. We don't want it to fall off. second. I'm going to put a pad under my left knee. The surface is a little uh, unforgiving. We're going to get into a kickstand position, so we're going to get to that end. So we're going to get to that uh, lift off the hinge position. Now if you have an object, whether it be a yoga block, a shoe, a remote, anything, it's nice to have an object to kind of try to clear over. I'm just going to use this phone to give me something just as a marker. Even though it's not that tall, I'm just gonna pretend like it's a little bit taller. I'm gonna try to make sure I lift it up as high as I can. We're gonna do hovers. So you're gonna start by doing a straight leg lift off. You're gonna bring it up and over your object, drop it down, lift it up, bring it back to the start position. That's one, we're doing five of these. So low back stays square to the ground, lift up, bring it over your object, drop it down, lift up, Nice and slow. Keep your arms straight. And we're gonna get back into that quadruped quadri position. Gonna move my body just so you can kind of see it a little bit better angle. We're gonna do a hip car, controlled articular rotation is what that stands for. So I'm in that quadruped position. I'm gonna bring my knee up as high as I can towards my face. I'm gonna keep my knee where it is, I'm gonna kick the foot out. And then like I'm a dog peeing again, I'm gonna abduct the hip. And I'm gonna take the slowest, biggest path up and around Heel to the sky, then I'm going to bring the knee back to its start position, but then I'm going to kick straight back up like I'm trying to kick the ceiling. Full glute extension, squeeze your butt, then you're going to kick the foot out to your left, bring the, right, the knee to your right. You're going to take another big, slow, controlled circle, back around, reset, I'm going to do three of these. The knee towards the, the face, kick the foot out, abduct the hip. Really important you take the biggest path you can. Nice and slow, chase the burn. Kick the foot as high up as you can. Got three, one more to go. leg now. So we're getting back into that 90-90 position. Left leg is out in front. This pad that I'm putting on my back leg because I've got a little bit of an ankle issue. It doesn't really prefer to be on this floor on that back leg. 
So left leg down front, clock is going. We got our two minutes. Try to relax your breathing. Close your mouth, breathe through your nose. Same exact thing coming up on this opposite side now. Stretch in your left outer hip glute region. seconds we'll start up that pales contraction of driving down into the earth Everything involved. 80. And 100. Crush the ground. Drive your foot and lower leg through the earth. And reverse it. Try to pull with your inner thigh. Try to pull that chest off the ground. If my left shin is on a scale, I want it to register as light as possible now. Make the scale as light as you can and relax. That's our pals rails. Part one done, four parts to go. We'll be here for another 20 seconds. Then we'll do that 90-90 transfer to get this left leg in the back to do those lift offs. out to the side or in front of you, whatever you can handle. Lift the right knee up, get it as high as you can, then slowly letting that left leg come on up. Try not to lean back, chest tall, slowly drop on down, get into that 90-90 position again, square it up to your right thigh, and slowly lifting that left knee as high as you can while keeping the left inner portion of your foot pinned to the ground. Think left butt cheek here. doing the hip abduction to the knee hinge. 
So abduct the hip as much as you can. Straighten the leg out. Lock your knee. Bend your knee. Bring it back. That's one. We have ten. Make sure we maximally abduct the hip to start. So kick that knee out as far out to your left as you can. Then straighten the leg out. Now look at that. I'm going to blame the Eric's bed. Let's see if I'm right. Stand position if you have some sort of object to use to lift over textbook shoe something like that a shoe is great we're gonna do those hovers now so the left leg is straight lift it up bring it in front of your object drop it down lift it up bring it back that is one you got five Really important that you maximally lift it off the ground. Try to keep it as high off the ground the entire hover. <clears throat> and getting back into that quadruped position, hands and knees. I'm gonna spin my torso. Actually, you can keep that block on for this as well. I'm gonna do one hip, or three, I should say, three hip bars on that left leg. So your hands and knees, knee to the face, kick the foot out. Biggest circle, biggest range of motion. Draw the biggest circle with that kneecap that you can. Bring the heel to the sky. Kick the knee out to your left. Again, biggest circle. squat, see how your body's feeling through the flow, reassess, reach down, touch your toes, do a couple different flexibility, mobility type things before doing these so you can see the pre-post difference. Again, like I've said at the end of probably all these flows, these are great as a warm up or a cool down or combining them with other pieces to kind of make yourself that 45, 60 minute type, like yoga E type class. I know this isn't yoga for that uh, close to hour mobility session. Make sure we're doing these multiple days a week. I really strive for three to four times a week. And if you realize that, like, hey, my hamstrings are really tight, that maybe you do ones that focus a little more on the hamstrings, like the hamstring flow or the, uh, the hip flexion one. All right, so you gotta check in with your body and kind of figure out like, what exactly you need and then attack that on a regular routine basis if you really want to develop any type of change uh, to your musculature. All right, that's a wrap. Hope you enjoyed this one as well.